he's a living legend in Nepal. The 15-year-old adolescent was rumored to have spent a year motionless meditating under this tree without eating or drinking. People came in their thousands from India or Nepal to bow to the one they believe is the reincarnation of Buddha. He became known the world over. Then suddenly, in May 2006, he disappeared, without trace until he recently reappeared just as mysteriously. No one knows what happened. A miracle or a hoax? What is the true story behind the little Buddha? He was born in a small village in Nepal. One of nine children in a very poor family. His mother, Maya Daivi, remembers when he was eight years old, he already wanted to be a monk. When he was a little boy, he used to follow the monks. He liked religious sites, he liked temples. When he was 13, he left for a monastery in India. His family heard nothing more. Until one day, he was found meditating in the heart of this forest, under a giant banyan tree. And for the next 11 months, he remained rooted in the lotus position. Was he real? Then something incredible happened. In the middle of the night, some pilgrims saw the little Buddha in the middle of a fire. This extraordinary amateur footage clearly shows his monk's robes on fire and the young man apparently impervious to the flames. And then another mystery. He suddenly disappeared without trace. The distraught believers left the site, which they said had developed a sinister atmosphere. Maya Daivi, the little Buddha's mother, found herself alone, stunned and deeply saddened. Every day, she came to pray at the place where her son had been sitting. Since my son disappeared, I've been feeling ill. It's as if a snake had wrapped itself around me and, and tried to suffocate me. His disappearance was all the more worrying because Nepal is in turmoil. A civil war has been tearing the country apart for over 10 years. The death toll is believed to top 13,000 and the population is on edge. When our film crew arrived in Kathmandu, the capital was paralyzed. There appeared to be demonstrations everywhere. But they're journalists. They're looking for the little Buddha. Welcome, 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 welcome. The way is opened. The very mention of the little Buddha was enough to get through. It's a 10 hour drive to reach the forest. And a rumor has begun to spread that the little Buddha has returned. Some people say he may be back nearby here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. I haven't been to see him. Here, everyone says that the little Buddha is back. Everyone wants to go and see him. Oh, for sure. And the rumor becomes fact when a group of hunters find the little Buddha in the middle of the forest. On hearing the news, villagers flock to the site. These pictures were taken by a Nepalese journalist. Make room. Keep back, don't push. They show the little Buddha talking for the very first time. Since you disappeared ten months ago, people wondered about you, some had doubts about you. There are thousands of people, thousands of ideas. Everyone is free to think, to have their own mind. Let them talk and one day they will know the truth. We want to protect you, but we're only humans. What can we do? Do as you like. I don't know. It's up to God to decide. 
But you'll be able to see me from sunrise to sunset. <laughs> News of his return spreads like wildfire, and the pilgrims begin to return. A winding trail leads deep into the forest, and police patrols are everywhere. Stop here. Uh, you can't go any further. You'll have to leave the car here. There's another 10 kilometers to be covered on foot. Most of the pilgrims walk or cycle, sometimes from very far away to see the little Buddha. Namaste. Hello. Yes, we're going to see the little Buddha, yes. And it's the first time we're going to see him. And we're bringing him offerings. Under police escort, our crew reaches the sacred enclosure. And everyone has to take their shoes off, quietly. This man just saw the little Buddha. He appears illuminated. Yes, I saw the little Buddha. I think he's a great man. The first signs of devotion appear. Aside from the sound of footsteps, it's eerily silent. The pilgrims hoped to see the little Buddha, to touch him, to talk to him, but they were in for a surprise. Behind the roped-off enclosure that prevents anyone from getting too close, the young man had changed his appearance. The little Buddha's face was hidden behind his hair. Only a corner of his mouth was visible. And for four straight days, he sat motionless. The pilgrims were praying, fascinated and almost frightened by his body without a face. In the month since his sudden reappearance, the seemingly miraculous has reoccurred. The young man has neither eaten nor drunk. How could he still be alive? The only person who might have the answer is Prem, a monk and childhood friend. He'd taken care of him before he disappeared and claimed they could converse telepathically. Does he drink or does he eat? No. no. Never? No, he never eats, not even fruit. He never drinks any water either. So, is it a hoax? We showed pictures of the little Buddha to Bernard Weisfeld, a nutritionist. He says a person can only survive eight days without drinking, 45 days without eating. Well, certainly. Sitting in a that sort of position for so long without eating or, or drinking, after a while he'd, he'd become paralyzed. Uh, the muscles would uh, atrophy and he certainly wouldn't be able to get up. Uh, he'd die for sure. In Kathmandu, the Buddhist authorities also have their doubts. We went to see one of the Dalai Lama's spokesmen in his monastery. He's a scientist by training, and while impressed by the young man's fasting and meditation, remains skeptical. Well, the power of meditation can certainly keep young people going uh, two or even three months without suffering too much. Uh, there have been unverified reports of such things, but to never move, to never eat, to never drink, I, no, I'm, I think that's impossible. Well, perhaps little Buddha has been eating and stretching his legs at night time. It's hard to know for sure. After sunset, monks guard him and prevent anyone from getting close. Even the military are told to move off and would not dare to challenge the monk's authority. 
No, we're not authorized to, to leave the soldiers on duty at night time. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I can't understand how a man can stay like that without moving. And then there's the financial implication, because the pilgrims always leave some offering. The small amounts of money left as gifts add up to 600,000 rupees, about $20,000. The money will continue to pour in. With the return of the little Buddha, hundreds of thousands of pilgrims are expected. The welcoming committee is planning to expand the roped enclosure around the young man. I hope there'll be enough rope. The sacrosanct area around little Buddha has doubled in size. It will come, he said also himself, and uh, uh, now you know the tracks all over the Nepal. But uh, if it is uh, running, all everything is open, then it will be very rush. The money left by the pilgrims will be used to build a temple in honor of the little Buddha. But lately, construction has ground to a standstill. The government has confiscated the money until they have made sure that the little Buddha story is not a charade. The fervor, however, is far from being extinguished. The young man promises to follow in the steps of Buddha, his guiding light, and to meditate for six years, which means he has another four years of immobility ahead of him. <laughs> 